Hey guys, SCL3618 here, coming to you live with a fresh layout update. Now, per always, we've put it off for a while, but we have a lot of content to cover, as in new storage space, new locomotives, rolling stock, and a post-train show report. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Alright, we'll get to the layout in just a second, but first things first is storage. Now, an old eyesore in most of my videos was the table, like you see here with the rest of the collection, stacked up with boxes. Well, we got a bit of a replacement. Um... I'll move over where you can get a look at it, and the, of course the GTR poster there. Uh, got a steel rack installed, so I can easily store all my set boxes, rest of the stuff there, uh, locomotives, miscellaneous up top, and the G gauge, which is really nice. As you can see, we've got a lot more space and potential for more storage capacity. So, with that said, just a little quick overview, my madness, and yes, GTR is awesome. <laughs> Uh, moving on over, we see the display shelf, all the same there, a couple of switches moved around. Um, one big change, diesel locomotive storage is now off the layout and onto the sideboard where the old O-gauge used to stand, so this is kind of the staging yard for that aspect. Okay, moving over here, we have uh, some more locomotive storage and rolling stock. You see all my steam locomotives are now neatly stored, if you want to call it that in here. These uh, yogurt boxes are very nice, the flaps keeps the dust off kind of a tight squeeze for the A, but it all fits, thankfully. Um, I'm hoping to build a shelf soon. We can get these guys off this into a proper display cabinet, almost like the back shelf here. Now, carrying on, got the rest of the rolling stock for drawers, the drawer containers, there we go. Um, two Hot Wheels car cases, this madness has gotten very addicting. A locomotive evolution sketch found framed. The rest of the stuff, a little mohawk picture on the back. This is one thing I've never showed you guys, a Lionel SD60M print. I have a minute to get this hung up for a while. Alright, carrying on to the back side, got one more thing to show you. And that is this Amtrak poster, which complements the brick wall pretty well. So, with that said, let's get on to the layout. Now, we're going to start back here while I'm already on this side and work our way around. Um, new additions. First and foremost, uh, pick us up for five bucks at an antique shop. This is just the Atlas station platform. Added a baggage cart there, so kind of a nice little station scene if I can ever get it fixed up. Um, rolling back around, see our donut shop from the last update, TARDIS. Newest addition is what I call Mount Cheapskate, and this is nothing more than a cardboard box car carved out to eternal, the two-track tunnel portal, there we go. And of course a little Enterprise cameo on top. Scrolling on back through, got our Hooterville Depot, and yes, if y'all never noticed, I did this a couple years ago, you see Stiggy and Dalek Holding out the fort with the general on the roof. Um, that's about it for that. Uh, one more thing I also found in the antique shop was a faller switch tower. Now, if you can look really carefully, you see we've got a little track schematic in there. The Germans are very good with details. So it kind of complements my Lionel esque Plasticville building here. Alright, so that pretty much wraps up the layout segment. Y'all know the track plan by now, so. Let's get on to the more fun stuff, locomotives and rolling stock. Alright, without further ado, let's get rolling on rolling stock. That's punny. Haha. <laughs> okay, uh, outer track is all post train show purchases, inner track is pre. So let's get cracking on the pre. First up, we got an Atherin Blue Box, Union Pacific Rotary Snowplow. I've been looking for one of these for a while, and it was really nice to find one that would not kill my wallet. Picked this up for 8 bucks at an antique shop. Completely new in the box. Only thing wrong was that the drive band broke, so I'll have to go to get a replacement band. But overall, really good for eight bucks. Move this out of the way. Uh, next up, got a CSX Coil car. This was Walter's proto line in the 90s. This was given to me, given to my dad a few years back. So get this nice fixed up. It's got metal wheel sets, very good underbody detail. So while despite being glued down, I was able to scrape it off, and without a few flat spots, it's good to go. Alright, next up we have an Accurail CSX Hotomar Moves Hopper. This is part of their new 2014 lineup. Really nice and detailed kit. Went together fairly well. Uh, pretty heavy car. Good quality. Made in USA for those who don't know. So, if you're a stickler for that, I know that's really good. Uh, rolling on down the line, we have a Roundhouse Tank Train Tanker. I have wanted one of these for a while. Um, but really did not feel like forking over 30 40 bucks on a Walther's tank car. So this is a great alternative. Picked up a Hayes Hobby House in Fayetteville. Right behind the counter. 
eight bucks, new in the box kit. Really good rollers for those who do not mess around as much. Uh, next up, we have a Tyco. Uh, Tyco Kellogg's Covered Hopper. Really cool find. Also found this at an antique shop with the rotary. Eight bucks. Best thing, the guy had already installed KD couplers, and that was <laughs> really awesome, I think. Now, the last one's a bit of a surprise. It looks like any other normal 40 foot um, high cube. But if you look closely, you can see that the trucks have rotating bearing caps. And normally, this is something reserved for the Genesis line, so. I can only guess the guy who had this previously swapped out the trucks and painted the cap silver. Either way, something really cool there. And now, let's get into the train show stuff. Alright, now for the train show stuff. Uh, first up, we have a Tyco, yeah, I know, something kind of funny, a Jello plug door boxcar. Now, you've seen the hopper in previous videos, so this is kind of a nice compliment to it. Plenty to get KD couplers with all these horn hook cars that are coming up, so. Going on down the line, we have a Bev Bell. This is actually lifelike on the bottom. SP two tone caboose. Now, this is nothing more than your simple starter set item, but I thought it was pretty cool. And besides, for a cool dollar new in the box, no complaints. Um, carrying on, we finally had the third piece in the series. Here you can see number two there. This is the Roundhouse 50th anniversary set. This is a steel side boxcar. Plan on getting more kitties with those and hopefully getting it in better service. The next piece is something I find pretty darn cool. The San Diego Matarara Museum. This, I've seen in Classic Toy Trains many times. These have a pretty cool layout. Now, on the box, this had the insig in oh, inscription. There we go. 4 out of 87. Now, I'm not sure if this was something the owner wrote as in April 1987 when they got it. Or out of 87 pieces made. But either way, here's an idea of the car if you've never seen it. Take a look. Let's see. Mm. New markings, new 486. Really cool purchase there. Get this out of the way. Uh, rolling on down the line, we have a Popsicle. Uh, Pennsylvania Railroad twin door boxcar. I think it's one of the 60 footers. Kind of an another whimsical find, but hey, that's the fun of Tyco and HO scale in general. Alright, the next two appear to be Bachman, just 50 foot or so grain cars, covered hoppers. This is Ann Arbor and Burlington Northern. Really cool find. Pick this up for six bucks total. Really nice find there. Um, next two cars were originally on the pre track, but it's kind of the connector card. This one does not have KDs. This one does. Anyways, these are the Tyco Toy Train Museum in Strasbourg. This is part of their collection set. Now, as far as I know, there's only four cars these two and the others y'all have seen in the videos the blue and silver and the Lionel style orange and blue. Now, hopefully there's a couple more out there I can find, but if not, I think I've got the whole set down pat. Continuing right along, we have an SP well car. This is Athern. Best part was the containers came included. Now, normally these containers are an arm and a leg to pay for. I think I saw CSX ones on the online for like, what, 40 bucks? That's crazy, but anyways, this was eight, so really nice find there. I can run some more double stacks. Another SP box. Best thing about this car, it's got weathered trucks and couplers. Guy takes some extra steps with this one. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Finally, on the last two, we have a Grand Trunk Western boxcar. This is in the Roundhouse. Really good, as far as I can tell. Um, Roundhouse makes a good product. Very reliable, easy to put together. And last but not least, we have a Walther's Cryo Trans Carnation Reefer. Best thing about this guy, it looks like, what, normally 20 bucks in the Proto line? Five bucks. This is really why I like train shows the best. I mean, you get great deals, meet new people. And come home with some pretty cool items like this. But that about wraps up the Rolling Stock segment. Let's get on to the fun stuff. Locomotives. Now, one thing I want to say first off. When you're buying engines at train shows, be wary. Um, always ask questions like if it runs, if it, you're still a little cautious, try to get it track tested. I've been screwed up for a couple times and just passing it along. And Anyways, I'm very pleased to say that the purchases I made this year do run, and run very well at that. So, without further ado, here we go. Uh, first up, we have Ather Blue Box EMDX Jeep 60 in the Oakway scheme. Very nice detail. Guy who had this before, pretty good job on detailing the handrails. It's good old Blue Box quality. It's a little noisy, but we'll get some runtime videos up later. Alright, moving on down, we have kind of a rarity. 
This is Walter's train line Jeep 15. Now, some of you guys are going to go, ooh, it's Proto 1000. Uh, this is train line. Before they went to Proto 1, it was train line. So, this is actually a custom job. It's an OLS unit, number 1699. You can kind of see the decal markings there. Locomotive runs great for all, most of the train line products. It's missing the back and front handrails, but really, I don't care. It does a great job and looks pretty fetching whilst running. Now the next two locomotives are a bit special and you'll see what I mean. First up we have this. This is a Walters Proto 2000 Florida East Coast E7A. Now I was honestly very surprised to find this set now. I mean normally you expect Proto 2000 to be kept under scrutiny and or extremely high prices. I picked this up for 30 bucks believe it or not. Um, the guy I talked with, really nice fellow. He had him sitting on a display case for a couple of years and didn't run them all but maybe three times. And since things started changing from DC to DCC, didn't really have much of a place for him. So, I was looking to give it a new home and I was very happy to oblige. FEC is a very pretty uh, paint scheme as we can see by, of course, their E units and of course the modern SD40 Heritage units. But, I'll give you a look at the locomotive on this side. Very pleased with this. Very, very nice. Uh, and of course, this Proto runs like a dream, so no complaints in that department. All right, for surprise locomotive number two, let's just say this is one I never thought I would have in my collection. Walters Proto 2000 USRA 080. This is the DC only model, which I don't mind in the slightest, considering well, it's just awesome. Uh, detail, excellent. Now I'll probably do another review of this locomotive whenever I get the time, but. Give it a rundown. I am very, very pleased with this. Performance is smooth as glass. Actually, outdoes the E units and even some of my BLI locomotives by far. Excellent slow speed. Uh, pulls very good amount for a switcher. Give you a look. Very nice locomotive. No complaints. Aside the missing sound, um, hopefully I can either get a wow sound or QSI decoder to throw in here, but until then, I'm just gonna... And with that, we wrap up our locomotive segment. Okay, time to wrap this review up. Uh, first of all, thank you all for sitting through this update, uh, listening to my random ramblings and monologues. I know they can get a little dull, but hey, you survived it. Get yourself a hand or a cookie. Number two, uh, we've passed 2,000 subscribers, and honestly, I... Oh, Goodness, guys, I can't believe it. I mean, some days I can't, I honestly don't think I deserve it, but thank you to all that have supported me. I mean, we're going on four and a half, five years, and thank you all who have supported me from the beginning. I know it's been slow in terms of uploads, and I'm afraid to make it a little slower, as in, I'm in my senior year of high school, we're going down to the bottom line, and college is up next. But regardless of which track life takes me, I hope to keep making some videos and bringing them to you guys fresh. Um, I appreciate everyone who's viewed. Comments are great. Keep them up, guys, by all means. Um, and just a viewer. I mean, if you're a first-time viewer, by all means, sit down and check out my channel. And hopefully you'll find something you like. Um, but anyways, going to wrap this up. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night.